I'm out in Steve's shop and we are making silicone molds, like really low budget silicone molds. Uh, you might be familiar with uh, these kinds of molds. This is a two stage silicone process. I think this one's called Umu. Uh, they make a really nice mold, but this thing would cost you about 15 or 20 bucks. This process we're gonna show you just requires uh, silicone you buy at the hardware store. So it's really affordable and the materials you need are really simple. Um, dish soap and then uh, silicone in the tube. This is the stuff you can find at the hardware store. We've got a couple different kinds. All you need to look for is this, 100% uh, silicone. Some of this stuff is gonna be like polyurethane, anything like that, things like that. You don't want that, you want the silicone, straight up. And then because you are using these silicone tubes, you need a, a caulking gun. Uh, we've got three tubes of silicone, one thing of dish soap, a bucket because we need half a gallon of water. These are the four objects we're gonna mold. Uh, number one is a crystal made out of plexiglass. Plexiglass. Steve made it. Uh, this is a real crystal made by Mother Nature. <laughs> this is a bolt. I don't know who made it. And then this is a CNC version of Steve <laughs> that he made. Uh, it actually looks really good. Yeah. Did a 3D scan and then. Did a 3D scan and did it. All right, step number one is to hot glue our little objects to the board. That's just because uh, we don't them, want them to move around when we're massaging them with the silicone. This and you're just my... using a, like a varnished piece of plywood, yeah. thinking that uh, the silicone Thinking will... that the silicone will release from it easier. Okay. All right, then we're gonna put about a half gallon of water in this bucket. And then like half a cup. Half a cup <laughs> of Dawn. <laughs> of soap. Of Dawn dish soap. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're not sponsored by Dawn. We wish we were. And the basic idea is that you're creating a super soapy water that your silicone will not uh, mix with, right? Yeah. So that then you can reach in here and grab the, the silicone ball and massage it into the shape. Okay. I'm gonna take off my watch and my ring. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is the molding agent, which is this giant tube of silicone. Wow, that's one whole tube of silicone. Oh, weird. Oh, it's so weird. But it's not, it's not sticking to my hands. No. It sort of holds its shape and it's, it's, um, it's quite a weird texture. It's like you're holding thick, Thick yogurt in your hand or okay. something. All right. I'm gonna do myself first. There. I'll pinch <laughs> off a little bit of this. So a pretty okay, seamless ball. A pretty tidy ball, and then I'm going to blob it over. Oh my god, that's way too much. Yours looks a lot tidier. <laughs> per usual. <laughs> totally fine. Nice, okay. Now we got our method down. You're just the guy who makes the balls. <laughs> right. Well, that feels better. Like it, that feels much more. Because it's the clear stuff? It just feels. It does look more, um, it's not like this. It's not all it's not. sticking out and stuff. Yeah. Okay, so the silicone's all molded up. Uh, we were gonna do this fourth one, but we ran out because we had a little snafu. But anyway, uh, we're gonna wait 12 hours just, or maybe more. 12? Probably, Pro well, yeah, we'll probably, we'll probably get back to it in a couple days. Okay, a day or two. Um, to uh, let the silicone cure, and then we'll come back and check it out. It's been two days. Yeah. Um, you don't really need to wait quite that long, but anyway, we waited, and these guys are solid. We're gonna try to tear them off the board first, and then okay. we'll try to cut into them and pull the uh, pull the objects out. Okay. Even the hot glue. Oh, awesome. So this oh. is the little mini Steve. This is the mini Steve, but since that mini Steve has a big undercut under the chin, we're gonna have to cut it open in order to get it out. 
It is probably recommended to do this. You could probably do this in a zigzag so that this seam would stitch back together. But since this is so thick, I'm going for it in okay. a straight cut. Yeah, yeah. So there it is. <laughs> but it looks pretty good. It looks like we got. I was worried that it wasn't going to get underneath the uh, underneath the chin, but you yeah. can see that it's filled in pretty pretty yeah. well. Well, you could cast a lot of different things. You could cast plaster, different kinds of resins. You could um, probably cast wax. Um, yeah, different kinds of plastics. There we go. Wow. It doesn't look like we got as good of a top edge on this one. Yeah. But we'll probably try to wash that one out before we okay. before we cast it. All right, now the big one. This was the big crystal. Yeah. Okay, that is more stuck. All right, so here are the three molds. Uh, you can see these two on the left worked out really well. Uh, the face and the uh, bolt and they came out really cleanly. The crystal just did not come out cleanly. It just has so many facets and textured bits and ridges and things. It just got stuck in the mold. It's important to choose the right kind of object for this. I don't think everything is castable using silicone just because you could have so much surface area like in this uh, case that it just doesn't work out. The next thing we're gonna do is do a plaster pour in one or two of these molds and see how it turns out. All right, now we're just mixing up the plaster. When I mix up plaster, this is molding plaster, I um, get my water and I fill it no more than like a third of the, the vessel. And then I just start sprinkling plaster into that. And what I'm waiting for is for the plaster to stay on top, kind of like, um, so the whole thing looks like cottage cheese. And then I can start to um, start to mix it. You don't want to put a wet hand into your plaster. And it's always more plaster than you think it's going to be. More powder than you expect. So you can see how it's not really being absorbed anymore. Yeah. And then in the wet spots, it has a little bit of a cottage cheese kind of a. Mm -hmm. A look to it. And I'm gonna mix this up. It's quite a small batch, but it's okay. And mixing up, you're just trying to get rid of all the chunks. Well, it's a chemical reaction, not just a drying out. So you have to mix it up to get everything all incorporated. And we're just hoping that because the molds are so thick, that those uh, seam we cut is gonna hold. Otherwise, you yeah. would stitch it together. You could stitch it together with pins, or you could tape it, or okay. whatever. So the plaster's <coughs> ready. You can't see through it, through your hands, and when you sort of drip it off your hands, it um, drips off, but it's, it's like thin yogurt. So it's pourable right now, but um, not so thin that it's gonna just run through like water. And we're not doing any release agent in here either. Murphy's soap or a silicone kind of spray yeah. to um, prevent the plaster from sticking because we're, we're thinking the silicone of the mold is, is slippery enough and non-reactive that it'll work. I'm going to take this one first, which was, which was my 3D printed head. I think I'm going to ease this slit open a little bit. You just don't want to crack the plaster? I, the crack, the plaster's not as tough as the... Yeah. Oh, we got a little bit. You got a little brain tumor. We got a little blob, but it's well, uh, pretty good. It's not too bad. The face is really good. What's around the back? You can... <laughs> so that, that's in the mold. I guess that's in the, the mold. mold. We yeah. didn't push it in enough. Didn't push it in. All right. Yeah, you can see it in there. Yeah. I think that's pretty darn good. I mean, you can even see the the layering from the original 3D print. Oh, awesome. So it gets pretty good detail you also if, lost if the, you squish it the in. Tip of your nose. That's probably an air bubble <laughs> from the plaster pour. <laughs> oh, 
I guess. We just need to be a little bit better with squeezing that um, the silicone the silicone around the object. I would sure I would almost get... coat it with a really thin layer that you yeah. really press on and then make the bigger mold. Yeah. Yeah, but still, that's pretty good. You got a lot of detail. You got some threads. If you look at them all from one side, they look great. Yeah. Comparing the Umu to the silicone, I think we did okay for the first try. It seems like you can get almost as good detail as you can with the Umu. The Umu is a little bit easier because you'll be pouring a more liquid um, material into a container around your around your object mm -hmm. and so it does there's not so much risk i think of of getting those voids if you don't squeeze it in but if you think this is probably a dollar fifty worth of material and this is probably fifteen dollars worth of material or ten dollars worth of material i'm going to give this a try again i think all right uh, thanks for checking out the video where we uh, reproduced a reproduction of steve's head um, subscribe to the channel if you don't already and uh, leave a comment down below. It's always good to hear those. Uh, hit me with a like and I will see you in the next build video.